Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Happy New Year to all of you. Hope you had a fine holiday, enjoyed your holiday, and just look forward to the new year ahead. Just thank the Lord for the blessings. Bless us well in this new year. If you would, uh, let's all stand, turn to page 540, please. Page 540. And Happy New Year to you, Ryan. This is Ryan's favorite song. All Your Anxiety. We'll sing all three verses, okay? you had a nice uh, uh, New Year's Eve and whatever you did with your family, but thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. First Sunday of the year, of the new year, and Lord only knows what this year will bring, that is for sure. But thank you for being with us this morning. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, thank you that we can assemble ourselves here, and Lord, I pray that the church will be strong. I pray, Father, that we will keep marching on that we will uh, keep our head uh, looking up, Lord, anticipating your soon return. Lord, may we be found always faithful. May your will be done. Because, Lord, we truly believe that you can change lives. You can put lives back together. Lord, you can. And so, Lord, bless us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. I want to just remind the men 
about, of course, this coming Saturday is our first men to men of the year. So uh, be mindful of that. The ladies will be the following Saturday. Uh, we, we moved everything back because of how the calendar fell. And so uh, just for this particular month, uh, the men to men will be on the second Saturday and the ladies will be on the third Saturday. So uh, just be, be aware of that. All right. And so amen for that. Well, it is good to have you, and I hope everything is uh, went well. I tell you, we've got a, uh, this was not the way I wanted our first uh, Sunday to start out. Had, uh, had uh, We felt like it was important to cancel uh, the Sunday school uh, because of some COVID situations, and we, uh, we uh, are addressing those and, and taking every precaution that as we can. But I tell you, it is uh, it's something that that unfortunately we've got to deal with, and so. But uh, uh, I hope and pray that uh, uh, those that are involved will continue to get better, and uh, we'll be able to get back to uh, uh, so somewhat being regular as far as Sunday school is concerned. We'll let you know. Uh, right now, it is our plan to have Sunday school next Sunday, uh, but uh, uh, if something changes, we'll let you know that. Okay. Obviously, we'll uh, remind you about our service tonight as well at 6, so keep that, that in mind also. Okay, for the day of you come. Okay, if you would, take your hand, we'll turn to page 197, please. 197, we'll sing the first and the last verse. God leads us along. Page 197. <clears throat> In shady green pastures so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the water's cold falls by the weary one's feet, God leads his dear children about you but I'm so very thankful God does lead he still does by the way and good to have you this morning let's go ahead uh, let's come fellas as we get ready to take an offering <clears throat> all right let's go ahead and bow our heads word of prayer and let's pray our father thank you today for your goodness and your faithfulness and Lord I pray that Lord, we would be mindful of that, and it would change our lives. That we, we would, uh, Lord, let you do what you want, us, want to do in our lives, that we might be like you. And Lord, provide, I pray, as we uh, face this new year and all the uh, uh, different aspects of what will uh, be before us. Lord, we know that you are faithful. May we trust you. Our trust, Lord, 
uh, is always in you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning as you give. His mercy did erase each time. Thank you, Cindy. Take your Bible this morning and turn to 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter number 5 this morning. Good message from the song. Would to God that we as Christians would let God do that in our lives that as God molds us and makes us, that we 
uh, yield ourselves to him. That's, that's, in my opinion, that's what God is trying to do in all of our lives. And I hope and pray that he's doing it in your life uh, as well. 1 Peter chapter 5, and if, you, if you're able to, would you please stand? Welcome you that are online. I'm sorry you're not able to get here today, but uh, uh, we hope and pray that the message will be a blessing to you. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 5, a very familiar text this morning, beginning with verse number 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, I pray that, Lord, help me to convey, uh, Lord, the message this morning that you've laid on my heart. Lord, may we truly be able to grasp what you uh, are trying to get us get across to us and and Lord I pray that it'll just be a beginning of, of of a life change may your will be done I ask in Jesus name amen you may be seated by way of background you know that obviously Peter is writing and he's writing to a group of believers encouraging them. And one of the issues that they are facing is that of struggles, of trials and afflictions. And, and, and so he's right concerning that. He also writes um, to, uh, especially in this particular chapter, to the elders, to, in other words, to the pastors. And he gives them instructions on what they are to do and how they are to uh, go about their task, that what God has called them to do. I believe in pastors. I, I am one of those. Uh, uh, and I, I have not forgotten my calling. And I believe it's something that every pastor should never forget. What God has done in his life uh, concerning the ministry and, and the role that, that he has. And uh, as in, in carrying out what God has for him as he... Uh, takes care of the flock of God. And so, so, so Peter reminds the, the, uh, the, the minister concerning his role, but also he talks about the younger ones and how that they are to behave themselves and, and conduct themselves accordingly. And then Peter, <clears throat> as he continues to write, he, as you all know, he, he begins to talk about generally every Christian, every child of God. And, and, and he says, beginning in verse <clears throat> number uh, 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be sub, uh, subject one to another. So he's generally speaking to all Christians and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And Peter spends a lot of time on that subject, spending uh, as far as humility and, and, and not be prideful and so forth. And so he can, carries that thought on. And in our text, as I read to you this morning, uh, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. Probably because Christians have trouble doing that and, uh, <clears throat> and it's something that needs to be addressed and so he does so. And he, and he reminds about uh, you know, humbling ourselves uh, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt us. That, 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 that you know, when, it's, when it's God's time, he'll raise us up and he'll, he'll, he'll uh, do what, what he wants to do in our lives. And then re- he reminds us as Christians, casting all of our care upon him. The reason why is because God cares about you and I. I tell you, what a great uh, characteristic of God that Peter points out to all of us, reminds us. And I tell you, and especially in times of trouble, that we are to be reminded. I cannot, uh, you know, I'm sure many, many, uh, uh, not only this whole world, but many Christians have gone through many trials and tribulation. The question is, has God been there? And he has. And... Uh, 
And so if you know anything about Peter in this particular chapter, you know that Peter then begins to address and focus the attention on our enemy. And so he says, and we're very familiar in verse number 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then he goes on and he says, whom resist? In other words, as Christians, we are to resist that. And the reason why, because God is our God and, and that we are, God's doing a great work in our life and that's the direction that we're headed. And, and, so, and so therefore, we, it ought to be, it should be understandable, should it not? That we as Christians ought to say no to the things of the devil and, and what, what the devil has. We should, all, we should all be resisting that. We live, in a, we live in a sad world today, sadly enough, because of, of the, the growing effects of sin. And, and, I, and I am sure there are probably other times of, uh, of, of, of that, that sin maybe have been more rampant. I'm not sure. But I just know in the world in which I live and what I see, that, that sin is becoming more dominant and, and more headstrong, more open and all of that. And it is just sad. Uh, probably if you turn the television on and, and watch a lot of the New Year's uh, Eve stuff, you probably saw a lot of junk on that. And, and, and uh, it's just unfortunate. That's the world we live in. But how does it affect you and I as Christians? Because that is something that we're going to address, that, that, that we're going to have to address. The Bible goes on and says, though, in, in our text, according to verse number 10, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. My friend, this morning, that's our outline that we're going to look at. And the reason why is because we want to focus this morning on the subject matter is simply this. Can he? In other words, can God do what he has said? Can God help you with the trials of life, as is mentioned here in our text? Can God do that? Is it... Uh, would God be a better choice rather than your way to navigate through this life in this world and the next? It is God's word that reminds us as Christians that God is able. And he is, by the way. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, the Bible says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Paul was telling Timothy, he says, Timothy, I believe God is able. Not only that, in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 8, we are reminded of this. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted are to help them that are tempted. Again, the writer of Hebrews reminds you and I, God is able. Not only that, in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse number 25, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Again, we are reminded God is able. He's able to save. He's able to help. He is without a doubt able to do what he says he's going to do. In other words, I want to remind you this morning, God can. God can. God can change your life. God, God can change a marriage. God can. And this morning we see that Peter reminds you and I of some things that God can do in your life. I want to remind you quickly of those things. And I want you to pay close attention without a doubt. First of all, the Bible says he can make you perfect. He can make you perfect. May I remind you right off the bat, it does not mean sinless. But he can make you perfect. Well, preacher, what does that have to do with me? Well, you know, it's about time we find out what it means. 
that we find out what it means. Lord, how can I apply this to my life that you can make me perfect? The word perfect there, if you have a Strong's Concordance, you would find this out, uh, but is to, to, to complete thoroughly. That is, repair or adjust to fit, frame, or mend, uh, to prepare, to restore. In other words, that's exactly what God can do and what he does in our lives when he saves us. See, he, he makes us perfect. In other words, he's working in our life. Have you ever remember, you remember that phrase, God is still working on me? Yes, I've been saved, but, but I tell you, there's so much more, isn't it? There's so much more that God is doing in my life, and so he's making me perfect. He's working in my life. He's preparing me. The tendency of affliction, as we found in this particular text, is, is to make us perfect. In other words, God uses it. God uses afflictions, and God uses all this stuff. What's, what's going on? Well, he's making us perfect. He's making us perfect. Philippians chapter 1. And in verse number 6, the Bible says this, being confident in th of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, God is changing my life. God is working in my life. And you and I can believe that God will continue that work even though it may not always seem that way, even though there's trials and troubles in my life, that I believe that God is still working in my life. In other words, you don't have to give up. You don't have to quit. Hebrews chapter 13 and in verse 21, make you perfect, the Bible says, in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, that's what's happening. And, and, and one of the things about God that we need to understand that he can do in your life, and that is this, he can make you perfect. In other words, it is God working in your life and, and he's repairing and he's changing and, and, he's, and he's making you fit. He's and, and what that means is we're becoming more like him and less like us. That's what God ought to be doing in your life. That's what ought to be taking place in your life. Is it happening? It ought to be. He, he, he not only can make you perfect according to what Peter says, but he also, secondly, he can establish you. He can establish you. Oh, I tell you, my friend, how we need this today. What do you mean, preacher? Well, the, the word establish means to set fast. In other words, that is to turn resolutely in a certain direction. To establish you. To confirm, steady. In other words, one writer put it like this. To render immovable. That God is working in our lives and he can, he can establish you. In other words, he can, he can uh, set you firm. He can, he, can, he can set you. Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 7, the Bible tells us this. Rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therewith with thanksgiving. In other words, it's with the word of God that as we learn and as we go, what, what God does in our lives is he establishes us. In other words, we begin to get set in one direction. That direction, of course, is the Lord and God's will and God's way. And so we are set there and that's the direction that we're going. We're not, we're not wishy and washy. We're not going all over the place. But we know that it is God and it is God's desire and it is God's direction that we go. Without a doubt, he establishes us. One would say that Peter was established, was established in the faith. Would you not agree? John chapter 6, verse 68 and verse 69. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. 
And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. It is because he was firm in that. He believed that. And without a doubt that his, his sights were set on the Lord and no other one would, 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 would even do. Would to God that we would come to the point in our lives that we would let God establish us. Is there any other God but one God? No, there isn't. And it's because of the word of God. We are convinced of that. Is God faithful and will God do what he says? We are, con we are established in that point. Yes, he will. No matter what comes. By the way, if you remember when Peter said what he said, do you know what happened? Do you know the background? It wasn't like everybody was in favor and that everybody was going along. That wasn't the case at all. If you remember, probably a lot of his friends, a lot of his co-workers left that day. They quit following Jesus. And so there is Peter with the other disciples. No doubt pressure was there. Just because the crowd is going one direction doesn't mean it's right to go with them. And so Peter was a good example of that. Even though they left and was going out the way and, and leaving Jesus Christ, yet Peter says, we're not going. In other words, he was established. He was planted. He was firm. He was, he was delivered in one direction. And would to God that our lives as Christians, as we set out in this new year, that we would, we would decide by the grace of God, because of what God's doing in our lives, it is Jesus Christ and no other God. I promise you, you will be introduced to many other gods this year. You'll be introduced to, to other ways and other ways of, of living and which will not include the Lord. But oh, would to God that God's people would rise up and they would be so established. No, 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 it is Jesus Christ. And that is the direction that our lives go and no other direction. You see, God can establish you. Through the trials of life and through that, I tell you, God will point you in the direction that will, that will teach you and that, and that you will learn that, hey, I'm the one, he says. That I'm the one. And would to God that, that you and I would be established. That we, that we would be like Peter, even though the world's going to one direction, that your life is going another. And that, that other direction is definitely Jesus Christ. That, that, would, that you wouldn't go just because the wind's blowing in one direction. You don't go that direction. You go the way God would have you to go. And as the scriptures that we've already read, that you do that which would be well-pleasing to God. How come? Because you're established, that's why. You're established in the Word of God. You're established in who God is. But thirdly, this morning, not only can God establish you, but God can strengthen you. Boy, how many of us need strength? Would you raise your hand? Amen? You better believe it. And that's the ideal here. Obviously, we know that God is strong, but that God will strengthen you. That God will, you know, the word strengthen there simply means to strengthen. Boy, that was hard, wasn't it? In other words, to confirm. In other words, strengthen. In other words, to give us strength to bear all the trials of life. To, to give us the ability and enable us to, to go on in spite of all that's happening. Even though things don't go our way and even though, even though we don't quite always understand life and why is it happening? And boy, I tell you, this question is probably asked a lot. Why did God allow this to happen? But to give us the strength to, in spite of all of that, we still are faithful and we still believe in God and we still go on and, and all of those things. God strengthens us. We face trials and we face all of that. And, uh, and what is the temptation? The temptation is to give in, isn't it? How many of us deal with temptation on a regular basis? And all of us would raise our hand, right? Right? 
And the thing about it is, do I have to live that way? Do I have to live that I say with my mouth, I love God, yet I, I, I do things that I know God doesn't want me to do? Is there, is there hope that I can be faithful to God? Is there a hope that I can do what God would have me to do over what my flesh wants me to do? You know, it seems as if the church sometimes lives as if this is just a game. Yeah, we go to church and we're faithful to church and we'll sing our wonderful songs and all of that. Yet, yeah, but, but as we go through the week, we live like the devil. And I, I tell you, we tell the world, we show the world anyway, that God cannot do what he says he will do. That really and truly, you Christians are no different than those that are not Christians. In other words, I'm sorry, let me say it like this. That you believers, you that believe in God, that accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you're no different in how you live than those that don't have Christ at all. And that's sad. Because I truly believe that there is a difference, that God wants it to be a difference, and that God can change our lives. And so therefore, God, you know, how many of us would have to at least acknowledge, Lord, I'm saved, but I am so weak. I am, I, 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 I struggle in the flesh. I struggle with my mouth and the things that come out of it. I know I shouldn't talk the way I talk. I know I shouldn't think the thoughts that, that, that dominate my mind. I know I shouldn't it. And, be, and I'm a child of God and I know I'm a child of God because I get convicted and, and, and God works in my heart over it. But God, can I change? Can I say no to my flesh and say yes to God? And folks, the answer is you better believe you can. But it's not you, it's who's in you. And without a doubt, would to God that we would let God do what he can do. And what he can do is he can strengthen you. He can, he can give you the power to face the temptations and the trials that you and I face all the time. Well, how, how, is, how is that possible? How in the world can, can, can I do that? And of course, even in our text here, we are told there are certain things that you and I are to do. We are to resist and we are to, uh, well, look what it says in our text. Notice in verse number uh, eight, be sober. God, can we be sober? Be vigilant. God, can I really be vigilant? Can I be aware? Can I, can I always be watchful? Is that the way that I can live? And, the, and the, of course the answer is yes. But these are things that God tells us to do. And, there, and as a result, because we are children of God, we are to say yes, Lord, and we are to do those things. But God, I can't do it on my own. I can't do it in my own strength. God, I'm going to need your help. And God says, good, that's my department. I can do that. I can do those things. But you got to listen to me, he says. You got to be willing to do what I says. Come on, follow me, he says. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, right? Hey, he says, and that's the promise of God. God says, I will, I, I, I will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. But you may be able to bear it. God says, you can face those temptations and I will strengthen you and I will enable you to, do, to, to say no. You just got to follow me. And would to God that we might believe that we serve a God that can do that. That can change. I don't know about you, but, but you know, I know people. And I tell you, folks, we can come to church and we can look the part. We can look all holy and all that stuff. But I know that there's within you this old man 
a wicked old man. And, and that, that you and I on a daily basis have got to choose who you're going to allow to control your life. And that's why it is so important that God can make you perfect. God can establish you. Oh, how we need to be established. And God can strengthen you. He can. And how, boy, how, you know, we could, I asked a show of hands earlier and many of your hands went up. By the way, every single one of your hands should have went up. Oh, how we need to be strengthened. We need more than this flesh. You know, sadly enough, a lot of Christians try to live unto God pleasing in their flesh. Can I tell you, it's not possible. Sure, you can try it and it'll last for a little while. But there's no way in the world you can take this flesh and please God with it. But you know what? The God that lives inside of you, if you would learn to trust him and let him do what he wants to, it can change your life. One of the things that will happen is that you can be strengthened. You know, the testimony would be this. I don't know how I did that. There's no way in the world that I could have done that. Well, that's true. That ought to be the testimony of every child of God here. Because you know what the answer should be? It's not me, but it's God in me. Right? That's exactly it. I mean, that was the testimony in the days of Nehemiah, wasn't it? That they looked at what happened and, and what was accomplished. And there was no way in the world that they did that. But it was God. But it was God. You all know it. Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But that's just it. And the emphasis is, is proper. It is Christ. He's the one. He's the one that does it. And that, that requires, though, you and us to believe that, that God is able, and so therefore I'm going to trust God, and I'm going to put my faith and trust in Him. And as a result of that, I promise you, God will strengthen you. You want to get help? You want to you be able to, to uh, uh, do things that ordinary people cannot do? You want to be able to overcome temptations? that the world does not overcome, you know what they do? They embrace it and relabel it. That's what they do. Did you know that there are desires that you and I feel that we ought not to give in to? Let me say that again. There are desires that you and I feel that we ought not to say yes to. But the world, they don't look at it that way. They encourage you to embrace it. And when there's a conflict, they just relabel it and call it something else. But we believe that the word of God is true, don't we? And we believe that God knows what he's talking about. So when God says no, then we as Christians ought to say no as well. But then we struggle. Oh dear, what, but, but, but God, my flesh desires what I should not, hap, should not have. And, I, and folks, I, I know who I'm talking to. Uh, uh, come on, you know exactly. You, you ought to be able to say, yeah, I know exactly. I don't want to say it out loud, but yes, preacher, I, 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 I've, I've experienced that. Desiring things I ought not, I ought not to like that. Hey, I'm a married man. I ought not to like her or whatever the case may be. I you, you get you get get what I'm saying to you. Some of us act like preacher. What are you doing? But folks, that's exactly where you and I live. We just don't want to talk about it. Yet, sadly enough, it it, it shows up in our lives all the time. And would to God that we would get to the point in our lives that we let God do what he wants to. What does he want to do in your life? Well, what we're talking about, he wants to strengthen you. 
Boy, he wants to get you to the point where you say yes to him and no to this world. That you, even though you have trials, even though you have conflicts, and we all will, I promise you that. Yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's not going to be easy. And some of us might think, well, how in the world am I going to do it? Dear God, I, uh, uh, you know, so-and-so is sick. And boy, we have, we have a, a, a church full of, uh, of people that have lost their, their loved ones, have lost their spouse. How do, you, how do you deal with life? How do you go on? Can I tell you? God will strengthen you. God will help you to deal with the troubles and trials of life. Boy, but you look at some Christians, you almost, you almost think, where is your God? Because you live as if there's ho you're hopeless. You, you live as if there is no reason to live. Can I tell you? God is the one that determines that. And so God, God, is, God is a God that not only can, can make us perfect, and I'm not talking about sinless, God is a God that can uh, establish you and I firmly. But not only that, He can strengthen you. Maybe this morning we'd have to raise our hands and say, God, I need strength. I know, I know me. I know what trials I have faced and I know where I am so weak in. And I have to hang my head in shame, Lord, when I face you. Because I can't control it. I can't, I can't say no to my flesh. And you know it. Maybe this morning, wouldn't it be good to finally let God do what he can do? Let God strengthen you. There's a fourth one here. He says... Number four, he can settle you. <laughs> you know, when I was being, when I was growing up, it was quite often we heard this word, settle, but not quite the way it's said here. You know how it was said? <laughs> hey, settle down. That's what I, what we were told all the time. Hey, 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 you back there, settle down. And the reason why is because we were, we were causing trouble and commotion and, and really having a fit back there and it was disturbing somebody else. And so my parents would say, settle down. Typically it was them that we were disturbing. But in this case, it doesn't necessarily mean that at all. But the Bible says here, he can settle you. The word settle means to lay a basis. That is... Erect, consolidate. In other words, a found or a ground. In other words, the ideal of a, of a foundation. Actually, we could say to, to found you or to establish you on a firm foundation. Hmm, interesting. You know, would to God that, that no matter what happens in our lives, that we would live as if we are on a firm foundation. In other words, we don't waver. We are solid. And we are established. I know some of you might think, well, some of these overlap, and they do. But to settle us, take your Bible and turn to Matthew, please. I want you to see this. Matthew chapter 7. as we glean this word and try to understand it and make application to our own life. Matthew chapter 7. To settle you has within its ideal, has in its backdrop this. Matthew chapter 7, look at verse 24. Therefore, whosoever, are you there? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rock 
and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell what? Fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Has the ideal of a house and it has the ideal of, of being built and where it's being built uh, is, is on a sure foundation. And, and, and get this. The storms of life will come and they will blow upon this house, but that house will not fall. And the reason why is because of where it's built. And as a child of God, we are built upon Christ. That we are firmly planted upon him and we believe that. And even though the storms of life will come and they will come, yet we are settled in other words, we are surely planted here. That no matter what comes, uh, sure, we may have to repair a window or two and things like that, but we're settled. And we don't have to worry. In other words, it goes back to the fact that we know the promises of God, don't we? Promise of God of heaven, we know it without a doubt, no doubt. There's no wavering here. We believe what God says when even though we're all alone, yet we believe that God is ever with us, never leaves us nor forsake us. We're so, we're settled. Even though without a doubt, we have troubles but we know that we have a God that is a present help in times of trouble. So, so, you know, bring it on because we are so settled. I am so assured that my God will do what he says. In other words, how about doubting? Nope, don't doubt because I believe in what God has said. I mean, you have to notice as, as Peter grew, Boy, I tell you, one of the things that he developed was a boldness and a confidence in God. And, and, and many of the other disciples the same way. Even Paul, as he wrote to those Ephesian elders and, 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 and simply said that my life was not dear unto myself, but I, I, I did what I did to finish my course and to do it with joy. In other words, what became more important was what God wanted in his life. He was so sure. He was so settled. Would to God, that's how you and I will be. That no matter what happens in life, we know. We know. I'm sorry. God is, is not absent because there are storms. We believe that in spite of the storms, no matter what we face, God will always be there. And that's, that's the way it ought to be in our lives. And that without a doubt, I believe that God can do what he says he's going to do. And no matter what I face, no matter how crazy the world gets, and no matter how that I am so convinced, doesn't make a difference. And the enemy yells at us and says, yeah, but look at this and look at this and look at all these things that are going so bad. Where is your God? And I say, God is where he always says he was. That's what we need. We raise our family, we raise our children, and we want them to believe in God. Parents, it starts with you. It starts with you believing. It starts with you exhibiting. It starts with you trusting. And then our children learn by our example. But may we show them a God that can do the impossible, that can change our lives. Dad, how do you say no to the flesh? How do you, I mean, Dad, you were raised up in an alcoholic family. Why don't you drink? It's only because of the grace of God. But our God can, son. Our God can, daughter. Our God can do that. Yeah, but dad, everyone else has quit, quit following Jesus. Why don't you? Because God has established us. God has settled us. I am firmly planted 
in the Lord. I am convinced with what God says. Folks, that's where we need to be. That's where our families need to be. That no matter what happens, whether it's COVID or whatever it is, whatever virus comes by and whatever, uh, whatever Congress votes on, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't alter our relationship with him. So let me ask you this question. You see, as Peter was writing to these Christians, he reminds them about the trials, the afflictions. But then he says this, and this is so interesting. Back in our text, he says it like this. But the God of all grace, and oh my goodness, we, how we need God's grace. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. <laughs> you know, isn't it interesting that these writers so often, they always had the end in mind. They always remembered God's promise. Because that's exactly what he said here. Look, please, I'm almost done, but look what it says. But the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. In other words, he's, he's talking about heaven, the fact that we're saved. And he's called us one of these days to the glory of God we'll get to go home. Hallelujah for that. But hold on for a minute. There's a while. Did you notice that? There's a while. We all have a while. Look what it says. After that ye have suffered a while. You know, God uses the sufferings that we go through to accomplish what we just said to you. To accomplish what God can do in your life. God uses trial. By the way, James knew that. James chapter 1. My brethren, count all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. We know that. That's exactly what Peter is making reference to. But this is what he says. After that ye have suffered a while, God uses suffering. By the way, it's his timing, not ours, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. We that have been saved for a while, we know exactly what that means. Timing. It's his timing. It's not ours. And you and I need to learn to humble ourselves and submit to the timing of God. Because in his timing, God will exalt you when he gets the glory in what is best for you and I. And so he says it like this. But the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while. Come on, don't quit just because you're suffering. Don't give up just because you're suffering. But God is doing something. What is he doing? Well, the Bible says, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. You see, folks, today, God can change your life question is, will you let him? Come on. We all have a story. Boy, that's so popular today, and, and they, they make it, you know, they've used it for all kinds of things. Yes, we do all have a story, but that story must include Christ. That story must include God in your life. So my question to you, are you saved? Then if you are, maybe this year, will you let God do what he can do? 
Maybe this morning you might say, oh, how I need for God to work in my life. I need to be perfect. Now, again, we're not talking about sinless, but we need, to, we need God to do what he wants to do in our life and less of me. God needs to also, maybe some would say, I need to be established. In other words, firmly planted. To be firm, to, to, to not be movable. In other words, some of us need to be set in the direction of the Lord and that's the direction we're going. In other words, we know where we're, we're headed. How about this? Strengthen. Some might say, oh, preacher, I need, I need God's strength. I need God to enable me to do what he wants me to do because I'm struggling. I'm struggling. God can. And then settle you. Oh, I tell you, I believe without a doubt, it's, a, it's, a, it's no doubt God's working in our lives. But you know what? You and I ought to know without a shadow of a doubt. Hey, no worry. Because we're planted in the Lord. Hey, the storms may come, but you know what? We're built upon the rock. And may we live like that. Even though there's trials in our lives, even though we, we have to deal with the, uh, the devil, that's okay. We're going to say no to the devil because we believe God will help us through it. My friend, this morning, do you believe that God can? Do you believe God can change your life? Then why not let him, starting right now? There are things God working in our lives to be faithful, to know his word. How about prayer? Oh my goodness, God help me to pray more. You see, he can. But may our lives say that. We believe he can, well then why don't you pray? If you believe he can, why don't you follow what he says? Well, if you believe he can, then what are you rebelling against him then? You get my point? Without a doubt, he can. Let me close with this. I'm done. <clears throat> In some way, I wanted to somehow try to honor this man. I know you cannot see it online, but The end of the year, one of our missionaries passed away. Um, missionary that has been on the field for 57 years. Brother Boyd Lyons, his wife has already passed. But Brother Boyd Lyons, a missionary that's been a part of this church for as long as I've been here. But a faithful man of God. He was not a big man, as he was really a small fellow. His wife was bigger than, than he was. Uh, but he was a giant of a man when it came to faith and trusting in God. And God decided to take him home, served his Lord. But he was a man that believed God, went to a foreign field, believing that God was the answer going to a field that, that uh, had all kind of idolatries and, and uh, just wicked, but he went there believing that God had a message, took him and his family and went there and began to plant churches. And the number of churches you would be amazed at as far as how many that God used him, but for all of his life, he believed in the faith of God, the message of God. I believe without a doubt, God made him perfect. God established him. God strengthened him the many times that he was so weak. And God settled him. And now he is perfect. Now everything that he believed has come to fruition. 
without a doubt. And oh, I tell you, would to God that the life that God, that we have right now, hey, can't do anything about your past, so don't let your past ruin your future. But let's start today and let's start believing, wait a minute, God can. God can. God, I don't have much, but can I tell you, God can take little and do much with it. But you've got to be willing to let him, let him do it. You might say, well, preacher, my marriage is such a mess. Oh, can I tell you, no matter what you face, God can. Will it take, will it take submission? Oh, you better believe it. Will it take obedience? Oh, you better believe it. But God says, I can. I can. Would you let him? Come on, let's all stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Brother Boyd Lyons, a very faithful, dedicated servant of the Lord. Served the Lord in a foreign country. He would probably call that home for him because that's where he was at most of his life. But oh, my friend, what about you? You have a life that God has given you. And how about right now, starting now, would you let God do what he wants to in your life? Don't you think it's about time? Aren't you tired of giving in to sin and giving in to temptation and have a relationship with God as if, well, but God doesn't do anything in my area of my life right now. Can I tell you, he can. He can change your life. Would you let him, starting today, the pianist begins to play. If you're here today and there's never been a time in your life where you place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, can I tell you, God can save your soul. If you don't know that for sure, why not come today? But folks, for those of us that are saved, come on. Isn't it time that we start living like God would have us to live and not like this world? Father, I pray, Lord, would we do business with you today, believing that you can. That, Father, you're able to help, you're able to save, you're able to do what you said you would do. So, dear God, may our lives be that way, positive, believing that you can do it. And, Lord, may you be pleased. So today, work in our hearts. Help those that are trying to give up and give in to you. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Dave leads us in a song. You come. Do what God would have you do. Come on as we sing. Just as I am. Oh, I tell you, what a wonderful song. You know, we don't have to pretend with God. We don't have to worry about what we know or what God knows. He knows. And God, God, God just wants you to let him, let him do what he wants to do. There are mountains in our lives and we are so convinced there's no way that God can move that mountain. But can I tell you, he can, he can. Yeah, but there's no way I'm going to be able to give this up. Well, you can, but God can. He can strengthen you. He can enable you. Our world is flooded with all kinds of new ways of, of, of living. And it doesn't include God. There's new ideolo uh, ideologies that, that are all over the place. But may we be firmly planted on what thus saith the Lord. Why in the world do Christian people attend church that or attends a church that does not believe the Bible? 
My friend, this morning, God is faithful. You don't have to go any other place. You don't have to try to find a new way. You just need to let Him do what He wants to in your life. Come on. Are you doing what God would have you to do? He can. It's about time we live it. It's about time we let Him do what He wants to do. I hope and pray you've done what the Lord would have you to do today. Be mindful of uh, uh, the church as we uh, kind of deal with some of the COVID situations. We've, we've got some uh, people that have COVID. We've, we've mentioned those already. Uh, but uh, just be mindful of that. Be praying for them. And uh, pray also, uh, I know we're going to spend some time this week cleaning up a few areas around here. And, and uh, you know, our plan is to get back to... Um, you know, regular, regular uh, uh, as far as uh, Sunday school next Sunday. So that's the plan right now. So, so just be aware of that, fellas. And once again, remind you about uh, Men to Men this Saturday, 9 o'clock. All right, let's start off well. Let's attend if we can, okay? And, um, but uh, 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 don't forget about our service tonight, okay? 6 o'clock, all right? Any other? All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads and we'll be dismissing with a prayer. All right. <clears throat> uh, Brother, uh, Brother Tim, would you dismiss us, please?